Okay, in this example, we're talking about the introduction to the central limit theorem. Now, some of the notation on the board may look, may look familiar to the notation for the sampling distribution video. That's because it is the same. We're going to apply things that we learned in the sampling distribution a little bit more. So remember, the mean of the means is equal to the original mean, and the standard deviation of the means is the original standard deviation divided by square root of n. These are key points you need to memorize for a central limit theorem problems. And this is just a very brief introductory problem. Okay, so here's the example. Suppose scores on an exam are distributed with a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 12. Using a sample size of n equals 9, find mu sub x bar and sigma sub x bar. So this is the mean of the means, in a certain sense. You could call it that. And this is the standard deviation of the means. But remember, the key points to remember are these two formulas over here. OK, so for this one, there's no work involved. To find mu sub x bar, it's just a recognition problem. It's just all it is is recognition. The mean of the means is equal to the original mean, so there was no work involved in this. All as it was was recognizing that the original mean was 70, so the mean of the means is 70. Okay, to find sigma sub x bar, there's a little bit of work involved. Because remember, sigma sub x bar is the original standard deviation divided by square root of n. And in this case, n is 9. So let's work this out. The original standard deviation was 12. over square root of n, which in this case is 9. So that's going to be 12 over 3, which is 4. So sigma sub x bar, in other words, the standard deviation of the means, is equal to 4. 